the Chief Fisheries Officer and other members of staff from the Fisheries Department. I take this opportunity to thank them for the hard work that they are doing in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on issues touching and concerning climate change and I know that detailed work has been done over the past years as it pertains to the Sargassum seaweed here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and in the rest of the, the region. We are working with other member states of the OECS to have a collective approach so that we can have a, a solution that can benefit all. It's very important that we, we work together so that we can share the human resource capacity that we have in the sub-region, in the OECS, and also originally from the standpoint of CARICOM. Yesterday, the department received several calls from the hotel owners across St. Vincent and the Grenadines, persons particularly who have the establishments touching the, the beaches. And we also got reports from persons utilizing the, the port. I continue to advocate that there are different solutions. We have worked with a technical team out of Martinique and they're still doing the, the requisite scientific research as to whether or not we can utilize this as fertilizer but at this point in time I do not advocate that because there was a, a finding that there is evidence of heavy metals and it was also noted that it can be hazardous. So until we get the conclusive report, we are advising farmers not to utilize it as fertilizer, not to utilize it as mulch either. We are going to work with the fisher folk of St. Vincent and the, the Grenadines because I know that they are impacted and the chief fisheries officer will be speaking to some initiatives that we will be advancing. At the cabinet I will be discussing with the other members of cabinet how we can address for example the situation now in Oya at the fisheries centre where we have trapped in that area uh, a large volume of seaweed. What we did in the past is that we had to hire persons to clear these areas and we are going to work with the hotel association to see the work that we can do on the beaches. It is um, indeed well, a mixed um, feeling to see what um, has been happening. Um, yesterday we have seen an inundated amount of um, sargassum in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It has been the largest amount I have seen um, around this time of the year. Um, since 2011 we have been experiencing this type of event and uh, we are part of a project with the UNDP to have this address. Uh, lately, we have been having discussions with the uh, UNDP office in Barbados on ways by which they can assist, the project can assist. It's a number of countries, it's St. Lucia, Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Kitts, Nevis, Trinidad and Tobago, and Barbados. We will be receiving some equipment in the form of tractors, um, barriers, that's some barrier booms, to help us with this influx. It has been a project in the making now for maybe three to four years, and we are now seeing the fruition of it, and we are very happy to be part of the project. We will be working with the fishers in the different um, communities, especially in Oya. Oya is one of the fishing communities that is always being affected, even though it is in a small quantity, but that fishing community is really at a disadvantage when we have sargassum, and we will be working with the fishers there to assist them. We know it has been affect, um, affecting the other fishers, especially those who have to go to sea and have to use the various sites. For example, Kingston yesterday we saw a large quantity. <laughs> we have never seen that before, but again, we will be working with uh, our minister and make sure that we have had some work being done 
and we can assure the fishers that we will be working with them to address this issue. It is our responsibility as the Bayres unit to look at the impact that the sargasm mat would have on the marine ecosystem. There's a mixed feeling about the sargasm because not only is a nursery habitat for many species of fish, but it can cause a challenge of navigational hazard. They could be stuck in the propeller for the engine for fisher boats. And you know, once their engine is damaged, they could no longer go out on sea. So there's a mixed feeling about it. Sargassum is something that we've always had. It's always been here in St. Vincent, but it's not until 2011 we started seeing those large influxes of sargassum coming to our shores. And really, uh, from the science, what it is taught is that this sargassum does not necessarily generate in the Sargasso Sea, which the name Sargassum comes from, but is really from the equatorial region where it just lingers there in the equatorial countercurrent. So as the time comes, around this time of year, as that stream comes up, we start seeing influxes happening within our area. Where we would have had this pelagic Sargassum before, just not at this level, so with warming temperatures and even things like what is going on in South America with like things like deforestation and those nutrient inputs are helping to increase the influxes of the sargassum that we're seeing within the region and coming to our shores. You can kind of look at it as both a blessing and a curse. It's really how we could best deal with the sargassum, what can we do with it? The sargassum was here yesterday, but it's, it's gone today. But there are going to be some areas where it lingers a little bit longer, and I think that is where we would need to make sure that we put our focus and see how we can best adapt to these challenges as they arise.